Hello, welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, comment, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We would love to hear your ratings of the movies and shows we review. Email us your audio file to recappingpodcast at gmail.com and we will play it during the show. Or DM us on Instagram and we will post and read it on air. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hi, Delora. Hey, Ashley. Hey, Recap Nation. What it do? <laughs> <laughs> we have missed you guys. It has been too long. <laughs> Absolutely. But boy, the time we've had. <laughs> Indeed. If we both sound a little ragged and run ragged, it's because we have been. Essence Fest definitely got us. When and... I tell you, Auntie Khan was a <laughs> moment. A moment. I love that post. I think it was Michael Harriet who said Essence Fest is basically just a older, wiser freak Nick. I don't know if you saw that post that he oh did. Oh my God. No. Yeah. And I love him. Oh my God. Yeah. He amazing. said, he said, you know, she doesn't like to be called freak Nick anymore. She's gone to school. She has children. <laughs> she is now called Essence Fest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love it. Oh my, it was so much fun. It was. And we are going to give you guys a recap, some of the highlights, some of the things that we got into while we were in NOLA. Um, But before we get there, we do have some quick headlines for you guys as well, because as usual, and for anybody who is new, welcome. It is our Thursday episode, and we like to talk about some of the hot pop culture in these streets. So, Delora, Mm -hmm. first up, we got to talk about Doja Cat and Noah snaps feud I guess if you want to call it that right (laughs) Doja Cat was out here trying to shoot her shot and got caught up okay um basically she was DMing Noah to try to get connected to his co-star from Stranger Things Joseph Quinn and he decided to post their private conversation to TikTok um he basically told her where she could locate him to slide into his DMs. And I guess Doja just didn't appreciate that. She said it was some snake shit. She understands he's just a kid, but, and you know, we all make mistakes, but she didn't appreciate it essentially. And news as of today is that she has since lost 200,000 followers on Instagram as a result. Delora, what were your thoughts? You're a huge Stranger Things fan. What did you think about this? It is killing me that you do not watch the show because season four is so freaking good. We might have to do a micro dose with a guest or something because we can bring your sister back on. Does she watch it? She absolutely did. Yes. Then we can do another, what you call the screen queen segment. <laughs> yeah. There it is right there. Y'all heard it first. We're going to have to bring Delora's love lovely sister back just so they can talk Stranger <laughs> Things. Because yeah, Stranger Things season, I think I, I think I made it through one and two. And then it, okay. got, it started getting, you know what it is? It wasn't even scary. It got really gory. And I don't mm-hmm. like a lot of gore because then I'm not going to want to eat. And I love um, to eat. And season four is definitely darker. People compared it to uh, the Harry Potter effect. All light and fluffy. Oh, witches. And then by the end, it's like, ah, demons. Harry Potter was so good, though. Like, Harry Potter, I stuck with through the entirety. But I get it, though. That transition from, who was it? Uh, Chris Columbus, who directed, like, the first two. And it was Mm -hmm. so whimsical and magical. Yeah. Yeah. And then kids started getting killed. So then you got... (laughs) It not got funny, real. but it's very real. Very it's not, real. it's really not funny, but Harry Potter people, y'all know what I mean. So, so Delora, whose side situation. are you on of this feud? If either, if you took a side. I'm glad that you added that last caveat, because when I tell you, I feel like 
Doja Cat is too old for this. Mm. But someone made a valid point online, like, you know, why you're reaching out to teenagers about their, co- you know, co-star. Isn't that weird? But the cast is a cast full of teenagers. <laughs> 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 and they obviously have some type of rapport or something. And then two, no, it was messy. Uh, he was messy. Yes, you can chalk it up to being young, what have you. But you know social media etiquette. These kids know more than we do when it comes to stuff like that. He was doing this for clout. It bit him in the butt. But at the end of the day, Doja Cat took the blame because she was the adult in the situation. Um, kind of like what it's like to be an older sibling. When you get in a fight, <laughs> most of the blame is on the one that's the oldest. So is that is that you? still the case? I can see a childhood, but into adulthood, you still feel that way. I mean, I haven't had to deal with it in adulthood, but it's still it's a it's a it's a role that exists. Mm. <laughs> You being the youngest probably don't even feel anything. I must say, I am I am <laughs> the baby of my with my mom. You know, it's also different because we're two different genders, so that probably also plays a role, right? Interesting, yeah. Family dynamics, huh? <laughs> yes, yes. But I'm sure my brother would agree with you. But anyway, where do I fall in this? It's interesting because I think when I first heard it, I thought it was just like a ridiculous headline. I'm like. Why is it was funny Doja feuding with one of the kids from Stranger Things? And- oh, Ashley, really quick, it kind of taps into what people already suspect of Doja Cat, her attraction to her co-star, his co-star anyway, her liking that random white dude who might be in that random racist. <laughs> strat- Not calling that actor racist by any means, but he's the you know, outcast, geeky guy of the season type of deal, if you know what I mean. She definitely didn't help her image within the Black community. That's for damn sure. <laughs> and then when I looked at the guy, I was like, this is who y'all getting into it over? No offense. It's just like... He's I, I, epic in the show, but I, yes. I was going to say, I get that he must have some big impact and he's a fan favorite in the show, but it was just like, for all the hoopla... Where, where's Brad, where's a young Brad Pitt at? That's what I was expecting. But regardless, I, I think I'm on your your page and probably everybody else is just like, it's not a good look at, as a grown woman to be getting into it with kids on these internets. And why did you go down this route? Like, you definitely could have done the research. You could have talked to your assistant. You could have talked to your publicist. You could have talked to many people in the industry. I would have even hit Millie before I hit Noah, unless they were already cool. Like Exactly. Yeah. It just, it seemed odd. And then when I was listening to Higher Learning and Rachel said that Noah had DM'd her before, I was yeah. like, what? It goes down in the end. I guess so. When you're in that celebrity world and sphere, um, you just never know. But it was definitely uh, out of left field. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on that one. So that's our first quick headline. And I like to finally say this too. This is kind of the type of quirkiness that you kind of love. And you can also get annoyed with when it comes to Doja Cat. Like the randomness of it all. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I think this one doesn't help her for me because, you know, I've been really digging Doja in a lot of ways. Even her little mm. issue with having to be pulled out of the bathroom to accept an award and getting so yeah. emotional on stage. I was like, oh, she's so she's so funny. She's so yeah. cute. Yeah, this I don't like when grown adults act like children. I mm. really it's something that really annoys me. Yes. So in this case, that's how I felt like let's not do this. He's a child still. He's 17. Yeah be the adult in the situation, realize, hey, that was probably my bad. I shouldn't have been messaging him in the first place and keep it moving. So it has been rumored, Delora, but since we've been away, it has been confirmed with a bumping outing with her man. Janae Iko is pregnant, expecting her first child with our guy, Big Sean, your homie from Detroit. Shout out to the D. What were your thoughts when you saw not only the picture of them, if you've seen it, 
together out in these streets with her little cute little baby bump and just their relationship in general because I know it's been kind of since they got back together it's like are they or aren't they are they friends they more than friends they go get married what's happening you know in all transparency and honesty they are not really a couple I watch with any type of regularity they're kind of like oh they're cute you know Mm -hmm. what I mean (laughs) and Mm -hmm. then this is like keep on going I feel like they're literally cute because they're so little together like they are so adorable (laughs) to me (laughs) very true very true so when I heard that they were pregnant I was like oh great good for them I really don't have much to say she clearly has a type shout out to her first baby daddy Omarion's brother (laughs) he's in these hot topics today yes for sure and um yeah, joining on OnlyFans and everything. So, you know, congratulations. That baby is probably going to be adorable. Oh. I, I have, you know, no doubts. Yes. That. So I do love this couple. Like I said, only because they're so yes, not only because they're so cute together and so little, and I just think that they just mesh look looks wise together yeah, so right. cutely. You really, you really rock with Janae. That's for sure. I and remember you that. know, yeah. I love me some Janae. Even though I all the music sounds the same, but okay. <laughs> now see, I would have agreed with you until Chalambo. Like Chalambo, I have not listened thoroughly to Chalambo. Okay, production wise. I totally got it when people said all her stuff sounded the same. It's very ethereal. It's yes. very, um, you know, aesthetically, <laughs> aesthetically, exactly. You always think of like her either being high or her being yeah. surrounded by some incense. But Shalambo really raised the bar for me in terms of her music. I love okay. almost that entire album plus the deluxe tracks when she released those. Okay. Um, and I like Big Sean a lot. And it yes. seemed like whatever they went through that broke them up for a minute was more so like him trying to fight whatever issues he may have been going Mm -hmm. through versus them not necessarily being good for each other. Mm -hmm. So when I see couples like that in the celebrity world, it's like, Oh, good for y'all. Like I'm rooting for y'all. seems like y'all love each other. Hopefully you're in a good space. Janae, if you want to get that ring girl, hope you get it. And you know, I just, <laughs> I just think they're adorable. So I think the baby is going to be cute, and I'm, I'm rooting for a boy. I hope they have a son for whatever reason. Really? Yeah, I want them to have a son. Why mm-hmm. I'm that invested, I have no idea. <laughs> well, she has a daughter. So. She does have a daughter, but mm-hmm. it's just like I just think they would have such cute little son. So I'm done. Anyway, next quick headline r kelly was sentenced while we've been away sentenced to 30 years in prison on june 29th following his conviction last year on federal racketeering and sex trafficking charges stemming from his efforts over the years to use his fame and ensnare victims he sexually abused that is coming from online I believe and the latest news about this before I get your thoughts about just overall sentencing the latest news on this is that he is engaged to Jocelyn Savage Jocelyn is one of the young ladies we've heard from frequently over the years she did an interview with another young lady Ariel within the last couple of years them both saying that all the things that people say are untrue and all this and that. And so Jocelyn basically wrote a letter to the judge again, trying to say, oh, he's so gentle. He's great. He's this and that. Her parents understandably continue to be very concerned. And I, I've thought about Jocelyn throughout this because Jocelyn was the one, especially from like the surviving R. Kelly series and all that, that I still wondered, has she gotten out of that situation or mm-hmm. not? And it sounds mm-hmm. like the answer is no. Nah. So mm-hmm. What's your thoughts, first of all, on the sentencing and then on the news about him supposedly being engaged to Jocelyn? So when I heard the news, I was pleased with it because at this rate, he'll be in jail for the rest of his life. And I immediately thought about his victims and hopefully yeah. they, you know, find peace um, through this, you know, justice of him being put away for so long in terms of the engagement. I also was not surprised by that because 
he's the Pied Piper. And I'm not saying that to be funny, but there is something about him that is charming and mesmerizing to have had so many women at his disposal for so many years. Absolutely. I definitely hope that his victims um, feel that this was justice served. I know he still has another court case that's coming up, I believe, on more charges. So this may not be the end of his um, years of sentencing. And, you know, it's super sad to me that Jocelyn seems like she's still in the throes of whatever this relationship he is, because I had hoped that maybe with time and with distance, just like with a lot of the other women who realized that he was an abuser, that it would allow her the space and opportunity to realize that as well. And I'm sure her parents, because that's what I always think about her parents, her family are hoping that that day is still coming as well, where they're reunited with her and she's able to move on with her life outside of whatever the situation has been. Um, but I just hope for the best for her, as well as, again, all the other victims that have come forward through the trial and just through the years and spoken about their experiences with him. So let's move on to a less problematic R&B singer, and that is <laughs> Usher. OK, Watch this. Usher <laughs> Raymond tiny desk guys dropped june 30th currently has nearly 7 million views on youtube and spawned a thousand memes as delora just gave y'all from his noteworthy intro to confessions my song i am sick of that meme though i'm gonna be all the way honest with y'all i was seeing it so much before i even got a chance to watch the tiny desk I can't get enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite meme of all of these damn memes? Oh my, there's so many. <laughs> there's so many. Oh my gosh. I mean, from, you know, your little cousin before they do a cartwheel. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> My favorite one was uh, I booked a flight on Spirit Airlines and they're going to get me there safely and on time. Because I, when I tell y'all, Spirit, I flew with Spirit for the first time to New Orleans. Ooh, when I tell y'all the experience coming back, I will. I hope to never fly with them again. I hope. Ashley, I hope. you should tell our audience the reaction everyone gave you when you told them you were flying spirit every single person was like word <laughs> spirit though listen it was not by choice the thing is, is I'm an equal opportunity customer for the most part I had never flown with spirit just because it had not come up during my travels and I travel quite a bit and when I tell y'all sp flying spirit, as I told the Lord, was like flying a school bus in the skies. Absolutely. I Absolutely. was not shocked, but I was definitely like, oh, this is some bullshiggity. But I can fly any airline as long as you get me to and from my destination with as yeah. little hassle as possible. Money. It Absolutely. was because y'all fucked me up on my way home because mm -hmm. y'all, one of y'all flights, the engine stopped working. Okay. Y'all delayed the people in front of me for like eight hours. And because of that, our flight got affected and I didn't get home till three o'clock in the morning the next day. So then while I've been home, y'all had an airline that caught fire. Yes. Brakes caught fire upon yes. landing. So I think, I think, you know, I used scary. to be in aerospace, specifically aircraft wheels and brakes. And that is a thing that happens. Overheating of the brakes. Um, one of my favorite terms from engineering would be will and brake departure. And that's when wheels and brakes like fall off mm. <laughs> the freaking plane. So these things do happen. Um, but one more favorite meme, and I posted this on my personal Instagram stories. It's like when you say Uno, but you got a draw four mm -hmm. for they ass. <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> <laughs> Back to your point, Delora, I'm sure it happens. It's just a, a cap on 
and other while on the experience that had already happened. So I was like, yeah, you know what? Yeah. We good. So both JetBlue and Spirit are now on my shit list. And JetBlue, you know what you did. Um, <laughs> speaking of this tiny desk, though, give me your overall thoughts. And do you think that Usher showed up and showed out on these little R&B boys? Well, that's the first thing I was going to say, Ashley. It was almost like a chef's kiss when Usher's tiny desk dropped on YouTube shortly after that versus hmm. that versus between Omarion and Mario. The millennium uh, generation is just falling sh- short when it comes to the R&B. Like the old heads showed up and showed out for the most part. And Usher, who was obviously cut from a different cloth, showed up and showed out on that tiny desk. You like, mean the one of talent? Like the <laughs> one of talent? Prepared the vocals, the acapella of it oh all, gosh. the falsetto, which we never had doubts that Usher um, was talented. Never. But but he was also part of that old school, one of the last artists that was part of that old school, like, okay, you're signed and we're going to develop you type of deal. Right. And he literally grew into confessions, which was one of the biggest albums of the, of the ops period. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it also gave me put some respect on my name situation. too. It was absolutely that because Usher in the media his reputation has suffered with all the allegations of his sexual exploits. It was not a good look. And let's not forget about, you know, the, the marriages and the breakups and the marriages and more babies and all that. So this is perfect timing. As we all know, he has a residency in Vegas. I just love it. And confessions. (laughs) One of my girlfriends and I, speaking of Stranger Things, we we asked each other, what's your song to bring you back? And I told her, yeah, Confessions by Usher, part two is one of them. Um, If you watch Stranger Things, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, Ashley. (laughs) I watched the tiny desk in the airport uh, in New Orleans before... Again, as I waited for my flight and it was everything. I mean, first of all, shout out to Tiny Desk in general. Y'all have put me on to so many great performances and so many great artists um, over the years. And I love the platform and obviously Usher doing it again in person, having the arrangements that his band put together, having the two additional R&B singers um, there backing him up, having the TikTok moment of where was Usher at seven o'clock. I loved every minute yes. of it. It was yeah. honestly, it was one of the longer ones and it still wasn't long enough. I definitely think that Usher, it was a put some respect on my name moment because we talked about this in New Orleans. Usher is a living legend in the music game and people do not speak of him as such. People now try to act like Usher is old, out of touch. His personal life has overshadowed his professional accomplishments and talents. That man puts all the R&B boys to shame. He Absolutely. is he's still king. He is not actually problematic. He is yes. gracious, he is attractive, he is he's still vocally he is vocally always on amazing levels. If he had had an opportunity to dance, Omarion, guess what? That man can dance too. That's okay? what I mean. It's just That's what I mean. It's so all the it. things. It's I'm all like the Justin things. Timberlake. Oh, God. (laughs) It's all the things for me with Usher. And so I appreciated this. I hope that everybody got reminded of Usher Raymond. And I also watched Monica's Tiny Desk, too, because I didn't realize Monica had a Tiny Desk that was out. It was really good as well. She did hers at home. I love the Mm -hmm. ambiance of a lot of the home performances, just like we love Chloe and Halley's. Yeah. They were sitting on the piano. Kurt Franklin shut it down. Phenomenal. Kurt Franklin has numbers. He has like 10 million (laughs) views on his Tiny Desk or something. And it's like whenever he started to get into a song, he had to switch because obviously the hits and the time constraints. Time. Like, this ain't long enough 
This ain't long enough. That's probably my <laughs> one possible regret of a concert a few years back. I got my brother and his wife. I got them tickets to see him when he was here in Orlando. My brother was like, why didn't you get yourself a ticket? It was amazing and I was like you know what I have no doubt and I don't know why I didn't like it makes no sense to me I would have been in there jamming we even used to sing Kurt Franklin songs in choir in elementary school okay I love Tiny Desk as a platform so do your thing Usher that's my point do I'm your thing sir and I definitely want to see him in residency in Vegas yes and he out here with the skates the roller skates thank you Thank so smooth you. with it. Thank so you. Smooth. You just reminded me. That should have been my last point. Usher has rekindled my love for skating. Like, no shit. Yes. I'm ready to buy my, my next pair of skates, and I'm ready Same. to hit the skating rink. Same. I've been saying this for months. Months. Same. I love you, Usher. I love you. Anyway, let's move on to our hot topics. Guys, we have to give you our rundown of Essence Fest. Delora and I attended over 4th of July weekend. This was our first time going to the full three days. It, I guess you consider it three and a half since Thursday night there was like Kevin mm-hmm. Hart, but we did mm-hmm. the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yes. And this was also just my first time in New Orleans. So Delora, start us off with your highlights of Essence Fest. Well, it was hot. <laughs> it was very, very hot in New Orleans and very, very busy. I've never been there with it being so busy. It was just, it was an experience. And it was just, it really was like reaffirming and re-energizing to be around so many beautiful Black people, all shapes and sizes, all I mean, we were everywhere (laughs) Mm -hmm. and no one was looking at us sideways. We were just living our best lives. And that was something that I really appreciated. It was just a, a, like a family reunion of people we just don't know, you know, (laughs) but we all know that we love some of the same music. We appreciated uh, the different, uh, exhibits from you know the beauty carnival to the the media with disney and even united health was there i'm like there's all types of stuff going on (laughs) (laughs) but what i love most would be we got a chance to see kamala harris speak with kiki palmer that was phenomenal um and then the concerts the concerts were absolutely worth it now i'm not gonna lie I dozed off a little bit, (laughs) okay, because it was day three and I was tired. And, um, you know, it's a time difference as well. But the fact that we got a chance to see Janet Jackson, Jasmine Sullivan, Chloe and Halle, we got a chance to see new acts with Sukka music, as well as freaking Wyclef John bringing out Lauryn Hill that right there was the reason why I don't have a voice initially <laughs> because I don't think I have been that hyped over anything in a very, very long time. And when I tell you she sounded amazing and was on time, and that's largely because we didn't know she was coming. You know? <laughs> Overall, I have had a lot, a lot of highs. I think the only lows honestly would be the fact that we didn't get a chance to get in to the really really good restaurants because yeah of time yeah and and also frankly a lot of them were booked and busy for long periods of time mm-hmm. um and then Nicki Minaj she made us wait and she was not giving now it's interesting Lackluster. Because she was in the UK and it seems like she was a completely different performer. I don't know if Essence was a dry run or whatever. And obviously the audience was a little bit younger, more energetic and more, I guess, forgiving. Or I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it was not. It was not it. (laughs) I have to concur. Um, my highlights, first of all, 
going to Essence Fest in general was just awesome because it was something me and Delore had talked about, we had planned for, and it was our first trip together. So that was really exciting to me just to experience this and see what this full Black experience was really going to be like. And I loved it. It was a lot. It was actually very overwhelming because when Delora mentioned time, like our days were packed, right? Like you had the daytime experiences that went from maybe 9.30 in the morning until 5 p.m. And then you turn around and the concert start at 7 p.m. And then went till what, 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. So our days were booked and busy. And there was yes. so much between the food and wine festival, the beauty carnival, the film festival, all the these various and events. Power. Yeah, yes. going on at one time. And it was just hard to, it's, it's, it, first of all, it was impossible to catch everything, but it was yes. hard to just catch everything you really, really, really were excited about. So it was awesome to have that type of issue, obviously. But some of my highlights are we got a chance to meet Ashanti because Ashanti randomly yes. as we were walking <laughs> through was signing books. And so this guy was like, oh, you have to get a book and then she'll sign it. And Laura and I ended up being some of the last people yes. in line for her to sign these books. So that was pretty awesome. She was um, lovely. She was lovely. Her arm hurt because she had been signing books for, I'm amazing. sure, a long time. She has like not aged a day, guys. She yes. is Amazing. gorgeous in person. Yes. Another highlight for me is I got to see one of my top five in the flesh men, and that's Michael Ely. He walked right past me when I was mm-hmm. in line, and I about had an out of body experience. I was like, "So this this <laughs> fine ass man just gonna walk past me like this?" Like in shock, I was shook. And that's the thing that I was trying to refer to is like even the celebrities just walk around and you know they feel the love they accept it granted he has security but (laughs) you saw so many celebrities up close in person I mean Tamarin Hall hosted a lot of panels and events and information I got to see Nia Long and Jasmine Sullivan on stage talking about different beauty things Mm -hmm. there were so we we, when we got to go to the film festival portion that was another highlight for me because we got to see this kind of who's next panel yes um including our girl Jerry Johnson from Harlem. So guys, go back and listen to that recap yes, if you have yes, it. Yes. And there were just, there's so many good In things. In Valley, we have to give them a shout out because they had like, I think two or three cast people on that panel too. I'm still upset that Ty Lepley <laughs> he did, not show up. did not show up. He was supposed to be on that panel. And I was yeah. very excited to see that man in the flesh. But Overall, it was such a great experience to Dolores' point. I need to go back to New Orleans outside of Essence Fest just to eat because we were so rushed and everywhere we went, especially after the daytime experiences were packed because everybody was trying to get some food. Um, But the concert performances, Jasmine Sullivan, I adore you. I loved your set. Janet Jackson, I loved. New Edition probably had me out of my seat more than anybody just yeah. because of their energy. Like, besides Bobby, they were good. They were... They, their stage presence Bobby is still was there. fine. I'm fine. fine. I'm fine. fine. You hear what you just said? Fine. <laughs> I expected less from him, and he gave me more than I expected. <laughs> when Shade Room or Essence, whoever posted the video of him where he was on stage and he was hitting it, and then he was like, okay, I'm done. That's the mood. Like he did his best. I'm not shitting on Bobby. I'm just saying, (laughs) I'm just saying their stage presence for the most part, all of them is still a one. And they had me out of my seat. Two songs I had to hear. If it isn't love and can you stand the rain? And they made me say the whole concert to hear Can You Stand the Rain. That was the last song they performed at like 1 30 in the morning, guys. And when I tell you, I was really struggling. Um, but we can't forget Patty Wamel. Like I I just was like, Patty is right here, right in front of us, giving us a show, kicking off the shoes. She brought out the hand mirror and the perfume. I was like, if this woman, she was sea walking. Patty LaBelle, to Dolores' point earlier about Usher's professionalism, Patty LaBelle was of that generation where it's excellence, right? Where like 
not only my performance, but my appearance, my approach, everything is still going to be immaculate. She still sounds incredible. 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 And Debbie Allen twerking on stage. Crazy. (laughs) Crazy. We ended up seeing one of the guys walk in who was on stage with Patty and Dolores said something like, you was getting it up there. (laughs) (laughs) In his orange little one piece or whatever he was wearing. No, it was great. I mean, the entire concert series um, for the three nights was great. I'm sad that I only got a chance to hear a song and a half from Lucky Day. Lucky, even though you slept in Neo's bed and you know you wrong for that. You know, I almost sent that to you. Uh I was like so Uh close. (laughs) I still think you have a phenomenal voice. So I need to hear at least what I really wanted to hear was I love you too much in concert. So hopefully I'll catch him on the on the flip side. But Overall, I will go back to Essence Fest. I need to prepare better in the yeah, future. We need now to have reservations at highly recommended restaurants already booked. <laughs> and even just my stamina. Like, I feel like I need girl. to be prepared. I need yeah, to I have need the Nikes. Shoes. Thank you. I, must exactly. say, I need to have the Nikes <laughs> together. <laughs> Because that's another thing, guys, we should say because of how crazy and how packed, because apparently Saturday night was a record night for attendance for Essence Fest. 80,000 yeah. people were apparently Janet in the building. Jackson. Exactly. Janet Jackson, if you, and the Jackson super dogs. Shout out to Rachel Lindsay. Shout out to yes. who else did we see out there in the crowd in the front? Lin- like oh, we saw, Jan- yes. uh, we saw Janelle Monet out there. Yeah. Lindsay, the Rachel Lindsay was out there. Devon, Devon Franklin, Franklin was, was out there. there. We ran. Randomly saw Nicole Hannah Jones just walking up and down the stairs of Superdome. Yep. I was like, oh my gosh. That's another thing. There were actors staying in our hotel. We had yes. one of the guys, well, um, Zoe's first boyfriend from Grownish <laughs> Cash. He was in our hotel. There was another actor from Modern Love who had some of the best skin yes! in person. And he was lovely. He was, Love- he was so I, engaged. He was so patient considering we could not pinpoint him and, and it, it was so irritating to me guys i wasn't even <laughs> going to approach him because i was like where do i but know I this man from and i was like hi sir nice to meet you you're an actor right you were in this right and then we just you know had a very small talk um at the airport i ran into um minda hart who's big in corporate america writing books about black women and we were just talking about luggage and I, and I looked up and I was like, Oh, you're the memo. <laughs> That's the name of her first book. So sweet. So kind, literally everywhere you turn, I saw freaking AJ from one on six and park, you know, chit chatting, you know, in the middle of the convention floor. Like it's just, I didn't just, even know AJ was still out here on the scene. That's interesting. Oh, he works for either Is it extra DC or extra one of those. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen AJ in such a long time. I don't even know if I recognize him since he or cut off all his Hollywood, hair. I think. Yeah. Cause yeah. I still like, I think about him with the dreads like, or the locks rather. But again, I would definitely go back. I encourage everybody. It's an experience I think that all Black people should have at least one time in their life because it's and that men incredible. Go to men attend as well. We saw this. We met this lovely family from freaking Cincinnati. They Shout go every to, year too. Yeah, Amara and Tamara. When I found out, you know, the daughter's name was Amara, I almost flipped. I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> we were meant to meet you. No, but I've only met like three Amara so far, but it was lovely. It was lovely. Absolutely. Well, let's move on to our second hot topic, which is versus aftermath, Delora. My God, <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving on these damn internets was this versus, because in case y'all missed it, the latest versus battle. And I don't shenanigans. know how, <laughs> how you missed it at this rate. <laughs> the shenanigans were on 20 from the battle between Pleasure P and Sammy versus Ray J and Bobby Valentino that almost would not end. Those mofos would not get off the stage. So the absolute KO that Mario handed Omarion's ass. Okay. But the night itself was only the beginning. Ray J is now in vocal training to get himself together after he blamed his own child for his struggles and got his song One Wish hijacked 
what he by the for other my baby for my he's... baby. <laughs> You know that he went and picked up one of those kids because he heard how much of a struggle he was having. And the fact that he did it in front of Brandy. The vocal Bible and the way she was blasting him on the internet the next day was priceless as well. He also got his song One Wish hijacked by the other R&B boys um, that had him quite upset and hurt. He also is apparently planning to change his name to Tron next year. So that's exciting. No, thank you. Mario, for some wild reason, has decided. Yes, I have to. I have to say it. (sighs) Has decided to flush all of his flowers down the toilet that he was receiving when he decided to announce that he has partnered on a new track with his brother, Tory Lanez. So unnecessary. (laughs) <laughs> fumbling the ball out the gate like how is that like who does that all of this clout all of this fandom that you had gained you literally just said fuck it fuck it i'm gonna do what i want to do oh mario you broke my heart anyway omarion who already received some strong words from his former bandmates such as jay book following the verses We'll be releasing an upcoming five-part docu-series Girl. about his fallout with the other members of B2K. Girl. When I tell y'all the shenanigans, I thought, I was like, what else could possibly happen, right? All of this stuff has happened consecutively for the most part. But no. No. Last, but certainly not least. The internet last night was in fucking shambles because Omarion's <laughs> brother. Oh, I didn't know you were going to talk about this part. Yes. Okay. Yep. Who Again, he decided to eat out watermelons with on that versus stage. <gasps> Orion, <laughs> the father of Janae Eichel's first child, as Delora mentioned earlier, is doing jumping jacks, dick swinging in the wind. As his OnlyFans account has been leaked. Delora, will this versus go down as the most noteworthy yet purely because of the shenanigans? Absolutely. It was pure chaos. (laughs) It happened, what, three weeks ago? And we're still talking about it. (laughs) Because things keep escalating. It's madness on all sides there's no reprieve if it's not one of them (laughs) it's another these r&b boys are out here tripping i don't know what else to say about them like it has been like amazing are you that deprived of attention though that the orion joining only fans doing jumping jacks butt ass naked is just so unnecessary to me like his face he he's fine okay he's beautiful he is a good looking man he's this beautiful is not necessary sir is this what people pay for on only fans like absolutely. I, absolutely I ashley i'm not on it so i'm yeah i'm like is I'm this not what on people it either but it was go known, there for yes for the platform to show you all the all the crazy bits uh, so to speak oh no i'm not shocked by him having his dick out i don't even think that's the most shocking thing it's you doing jumping jacks with your dick out like yeah there's more sexy things things to do with your dick out than jumping jacks again no i thought i was i thought i was completely done with them when they were eating the watermelon on stage because no one asked for that (laughs) And then you find out that Marion ain't really singing his songs and he never did for B2K. That tea was hot. I didn't Jay know that. Book, they, Jay Book said, I'm about to burn <laughs> this shit to the ground. <laughs> Mario alluded to it on stage. Also, Mario pulled no punches. That's why I was really pleasantly surprised by how the verses inevitably went because I've never seen that much of Mario to be honest like in personality yeah, yeah like again that's true I knew he was hella talented vocally I knew and we've seen him, act him on Empire and Absolutely. whatnot yeah. but yeah to know that he was such a shit talker and all this stuff delightful I enjoyed it but 
again, he's killed he's killed his credibility for me, so I have to move on from him. But Omarion, 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 you have you about to release a book talking about you unbothered, yet you about to release a whole docu-series about your fallout with your little boys. Ashley, his reputation was stellar until this versus. <laughs> it was like the idea of Omarion lived, you know, in a very flattering light for a lot of people, including myself, especially how he handled his baby mama drama, right? Yeah, with the little the situation. Omarion mm-hmm. was peak goals at one point, you know what I mean? And now they obviously hit a nerve because this five part series, like, first of all, why is, is it five parts? Out? Why, is, why it five? is it five parts? Why? What all could you possibly say? In five parts. Especially if you're not going to have the other people on there. Exactly. I think that was the perspective online too. was like, nobody wants to hear just your side. Like you're talking about a group. Like they would rather hear, you know, the future documentary with all of them airing out their grievances. That would be a much juicier documentary. Side note, BET, Lifetime Achievement, Diddy. One of the things that really stick, stood out to me was the fact that he performed at his own lifetime achievement performance, but that's ego. So that's give or take. But the fact that he didn't have Usher there, he didn't have B2K there. He didn't have Danny Kane, uh, Dirty Money, Day 26. I'm just like, did you really feel celebrated, Diddy? Because everybody that you supposedly had on the come up, really didn't show only his day ones were really there kim mary J. am sure that man is fine i'm he sure he's the... fine but that says a lot about his reputation with the people he's been attached with so so i say that because i was since in this conversation we were having we've talked about usher and you know now i'm marianne with b2k diddy was very hand you know heavy handed in the beginning of that group you know what i mean so anyway yeah, I I think with B2K, I was more I got more wrapped up in the sexual assault allegations Ooh. that Rasby was putting out there and all that stuff yeah. that I really cared about, like the infighting stuff. Yeah. So unless Omar is gonna address some of that and is really gonna talk about like real life situations, I'm really it's really not gonna matter to me about the little fights or who's you know on more, who's more popular and all that. I really could care less. I was never a huge B2K fan. No. But it's same. not Bum 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 was a bop for sure, but yeah. But to same. the point of the whole conversation, it, it's definitely a deterioration of his image that he's had because again it makes you seem really bothered if you're now about to put out a full docu-series right so we'll see what comes of it but girl i'm just curious is is this shit gonna keep going like what's next what's next from this versus (laughs) what's next wait this versus is like the tiger king (laughs) seriously (laughs) that's a great comparison that is a great great comparison to laura we'll leave it there Let's move on to our final hot topic, and then we're going to get out of here, guys. And that is Emmys nominations. The 2022 Emmy noms have been announced, and we have a few record-breaking moments that have happened with these nominations this year. Special shout out, I guess I want to give to two of our faves in particular, and that is Quinta Brunson. Okay, Abbott Elementary. Go back and listen to that recap. Her name. She is making history as the first Black woman to earn three nominations in the comedy categories in the same year, according to Variety. She is has nominations for Outstanding Comedy Series, Lead Actress in a Comedy, and Writing for a Comedy Series. Congratulations, Quinta. Well deserved, sis. Congratulations, Zendaya. Our girl. Yes, yes, yes. Euphoria. Again, go back and listen to that recap if y'all have not. When I tell y'all, I put myself through some stress (laughs) to do that recap for y'all. Okay, she makes history yet again. Because if we recall, she made history as the youngest actress to win outstandingly actress in a drama series for Euphoria in 2020. 
This year, her nomination puts her as the youngest two-time lead acting nominee ever. She also becomes the youngest woman ever nominated for producing at the Emmys, as Euphoria is up for Outstanding Drama Series. And she is now the first Black woman and second Black person to be nominated for acting and songwriting in the same year at the Emmys. In addition to her lead actress nomination, two Euphoria songs that she co-wrote, Elliot's Song and I'm Tired, are nominated for Outstanding Original Music and Lyrics. Congratulations, Z. Congratulations. Doing the damn thing. All Absolutely. right. Let's, Absolutely. Let's I want to be like her to, when I grow up. <laughs> seriously, <laughs> please. Let's get to the major categories and talk through some of these, Delora. All right. For Outstanding Drama Series, we have Better Call Saul, Euphoria, Ozark, Severance, Squid Game, Stranger Things, Succession, and Yellow Jackets. Any predictions? It's probably going to be Secession. I really, it's either between Secession or Squid Games. Those are my two picks. Yeah, Succession is out here leading nominations, I believe. So that makes sense. You know, I'm hoping that they throw a wrench in it, though, and that they actually don't give it to Succession this year. It'd be nice. (laughs) I'm hoping, I would love to see Squid Game or Euphoria get it. Maybe I'm biased. Yeah. Um, But, you know, I I would just love to see them shake it up a little bit because Succession is already a darling it is but stranger things was really good but i don't think they'll get it but this season was by far the best season in my opinion outstanding comedy series abbott elementary barry curb your enthusiasm hacks the marvelous mrs mazel only murders in the building ted lasso and what we do in the shadows prediction Abbott Elementary, Abbott Elementary, Abbott Elementary. Hands down, baby. Let's go, Quinta. You cannot make a more perfect season one. Like, that was perfection. It was great. It was great. Outstanding limited series, Dope Sick, The Dropout, Inventing Anna, shocking, Pam and Tommy, and The White Lotus, prediction. I don't have a horse in this race, but my predictions based off popularity would be the White Lotus. Interesting. I think Dope Sick should get it just because I thought Dope Sick was Mm -hmm. very, very good Mm -hmm. and not a story that has been, I don't think, largely told. So I'm rooting for Dope Sick. Outstanding lead actor in a drama series, Brian Cox, Succession, Lee Jung Jae, Squid Game, Bob Odenkirk, Better Call Saul, Adam Scott, Severance, Jeremy Strong, Succession. I'm going to go with Squid Game, Mr. Lee. I'm going to give it to him, too, even though I think possibly one of the Succession guys, like Absolutely. Jeremy, But it is the last it. season of Ozark, so who knows if Jason can, can do it. All right, so Jason Bateman is your potential dark horse. It's last season, uh, but I I'm um, I'm feeling good with Squid Game. Actor. Outstanding lead actress in a drama series: Jodie Comer, Killing Eve; Laura Linney, Ozark; Melanie Linsky, Yellow Jacket; Sandra O, oh, Killing Eve; Reese Witherspoon, The Morning Show; Zendaya, Euphoria. Z, absolutely. My one thing about this category, though, is I loved Killing Eve, but I don't think that his final season was its strongest. So I think that there could have been room for another woman who has had an outstanding performance this year um, to have gotten to have slid into that category. So that's my one thing. Mandy Moore. I.E. Mandy Moore strong. Mandy Moore is on my snubs list and I'm quite pissed about it. Um, outstanding supporting actor in a drama series nicholas braun succession billy crudup the morning show kieran culkin succession parquet sue squid game matthew mcfadden succession john turturro severance christopher walken severance oying sue squid game see the problem is i don't know the difference between the two actors offhand right now for squid game Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to go with the, the evil guy, the, the, the player one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The one who ended up being over everything. I gotcha. I thought Billy Crudup did a good job in the morning show. I haven't, I, I haven't been able to get into severance. One of my friends thinks it's an incredible show, but I couldn't get into it. So it's not to say that those performances weren't excellent. I just, 
I haven't been able to really sit down and give it a, a full good watch. No, I was referring to Park. He was the one that was the friend who was the businessman who screwed everybody. Oh, he's the one you think should get it. Got mm-hmm. you. Gotcha. Okay. Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series. Patricia Arquette, Severance. Julia Garner, Ozark. Jung Ho Yin, Squid Game. Christina Ricci, Yellow Jackets. Rhea Seahorn, Better Call Saul. J. Smith Cameron, Succession. Sarah Snook, Succession. Sydney Sweeney, Euphoria. I'm going to give it to Sydney. I know, Korea. right? I she would cried love her ass off this season and was crazy and everything. I would love to see Sydney get it. I despised her so much. That's great acting. Like, absolutely <laughs> hated her guts. Outstanding lead actor in a comedy series Donald Glover, Atlanta, Bill Hader, Barry, Nicholas Holt, The Great. Steve Martin, Only Murders in the Building. Martin Short, Only Murders in the Building. Jason Sudeikis, Ted Lasso. I'm going Martin Short because I love him so much. (laughs) Um, Yep, that's what I'm going for. I would love Martin Short to win this, but you know they about to give it to Jason's ass. You, you know so. And season two, I've said this on the podcast multiple times, did not live up to season one for me. So I'm not saying this is in, I agree. I'm saying this is in Ted Lasso. I think it's still beloved. Mm-hmm. And so I think that as much as he won last year, he's going to continue to win this year. Mm. So that's my prediction. Outstanding lead actress in a comedy series, Rachel Brosnahan for The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Quinta for Abbott Elementary, Kaylee Cuoco, The Flight Attendant, Elle Fanning, The Great, Issa Rae, Insecure, Jean Smart, Hacks. (laughs) Quinta for me. It's Quinta for you. You know what? I want my girl Issa to take this because it was the final season of Insecure. So I'm a, I'm gonna give it to Issa. I think Quinta. It's either Quinta or Jean Smart. I think are gonna yes, take this category. I agree. But I would love to see East get celebrated at a mm-hmm. prominent award show. So. Absolutely. Outstanding supporting actor in a comedy series: Anthony Kerrigan, Barry, Brett Goldstein, Ted Lasso, Tokib. Jamo, Ted Lasso, Nick Muhammad, Ted Lasso, okay, Tony Shalhoub, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Tyler James Williams, Abbott Elementary, Henry Winkler, Barry, and Bowen Yang, Saturday Night Live. Oh, I love Bowen Yang so much, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to stick to my Abbott Elementary, although I don't know if Tyler can do it this this season no he's not gonna win they're gonna give it to ted they're gonna give it to one of the three gentlemen that they have well, don't you hope that, that cancels ted. out or something but it's not it's <laughs> not going to that's the problem brett probably is gonna win it again um for his season to turn even though i think nick is the one who had kind of a crazier arc to his character in mm. season two so we'll see what happens but it's gonna be ted Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series, Alex Burstein, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Hannah Einbender, Hacks, Janelle James, Avid Elementary, Kate McKinnon, Saturday Night Live, Sarah Niles, Ted Lasso, Cheryl Lee Ralph, Avid Elementary, Legend. Juno Temple, Ted Lasso, Hannah Waddingham, Ted Lasso. See, I feel the same way as I felt as the best actress in a comedy series because between Janelle and Miss Diva Shirley Ralph yes I don't even want to say I don't even want to say because here's the deal Janelle when she fell off that chair (laughs) laughing at Clinton only having one boyfriend her whole entire life took me out but then and then black (laughs) actually Zach sorry not over it but then we got the sweet baby jesus and the grown one too i was gonna say they were equally great it's just one character is more reserved than the other right so it's like what performance do you celebrate exactly who's who who gets it but it's between them two for me i hope that either one of them take it and that it's a win for abbott for the night over 
Ted Lasso because again, <laughs> I really, I'm, I'm over it. I'm over you guys. All right. I'm over it. Um, again, I love the show, but I'm, you know what I mean yeah, in terms yeah. of recognition, we yeah. got to pass this baby around outstanding lead actor in a limited series or TV movie, Colin Firth, the staircase. I still have to watch that. Andrew Garfield under the banner of heaven. Hard time getting through it, by the way. Mm. Uh, Andrew Garfield under the banner of heaven. Excellent. Exceptional. Oscar Isaac, scenes from a marriage, heartbreaking. Okay. Michael Keaton, dope sick, phenomenal. Hymish Patel, Station Eleven. I still have to watch that. And Sebastian Stan, Pam and Tommy. This is a good category. Who you got? It's really good. I'm giving it to Andrew Garfield because mm. I love under I mean, I shouldn't say love because that story was fucked up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it was. It was, he was so good. The subtlety in his performance. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad to see him um, nominated because I don't think anyone else got nominated from that series. And so I'm going to give it to him. This is a tough one for me. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to let, let this one play out because I could. Ashley, see... you can't do that. I had to pick <sighs> one. Fine. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to throw a wrench in y'all whole game and I'm going to give it to Sebastian Stan for Pam and Tommy because Interesting. Sebastian Stan and I have, I have to give it up to both him and Lily James. They've really yeah. transformed for they those sure characters. Yep. And so, you know, I think those type of roles and those type of performances need to be celebrated, especially when you're portraying people who are still alive and you know, all of that. So I, I'm I'm going to throw a wrench in the game and I'm going to tip my hat to Sebastian Stan in this category. Outstanding lead actress in a limited series or TV movie, Tony Collette, The Staircase, Julia Garner, Inventing Anna, Lily James. I do not have time for this. <laughs> <laughs> Lily James, Pam and Tommy, Sarah Paulson, Impeachment, American Crime Story, Margaret Qualley, Maid, Amanda Seyfried, the dropout. This is one of the only categories where I've seen almost every project except the staircase. And who you got? Who you got? And for me, I have not watched all these things and I really don't have a horse in this race. Um, but for the sake of conversation, I'll give it to Amanda. Mm, she did do a great job as Elizabeth Holmes in the dropout, but I think I'm going to give it to, uh, it's tough for me between Lily James and Sarah Paulson, because again, I do think Lily James had to transform, but Sarah Paulson is phenomenal as well. So so is Tony Collette. Like she is so good in like everything well, Tony, she does. I love Tony Collette in general, but I haven't seen the staircase, so that's why I, I can't. And she's good. I just haven't finished it because I just keep falling asleep. Yeah, I can't rule on it. So I'm, you know what? Since I gave it to Sebastian for Pam and Tommy, I'm gonna give it to Sarah Paulson because let's be realistic. I don't think Pam and Tommy's gonna win two major acting categories. I don't think so either. Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Limited Series or TV Movie, Maury Bartlett for The White Lotus, Jake Lacey, The White Lotus, Will Poulter, Dope Sick, Seth Rogen, Pam and Tommy, Peter Sarsgaard, Dope Sick, Michael Stuhlbarg, Dope Sick, Steve Zahn, The White Lotus. I, I genuinely don't know. I, I, I have nothing because I have not seen all of these projects, so... And based off of popularity, I don't even know who's in standout for the, from the supporting actor perspective. So I think I'm going to give it to Peter Sarsgaard for Dope Sick. I know okay. Seth Rogen had to be serious in his role in Pam and yeah. Tommy because he was the guy who stole the sex tape and all yeah. of that. But again, I don't think Pam and Tommy's taking home like multiple awards, whereas Dope Sick is a series I think will. So I'll do Peter Sarsgaard. Mm. All right, our last category, Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Limited Series or TV Movie, Connie Britton, The White Lotus, Jennifer Coolidge, The White Lotus, Alexandria Daddario, The White Lotus, my God, Caitlin Deaver, Dope Sick, Natasha Rothwell, The White Lotus, Sydney Sweeney, The White Lotus, Mayor Winningham, Dope Sick. Uh, I'm going with Natasha. Okay, give it to Natasha then. It's probably going to be in my mind... I'm feeling Connie is probably going to take it home. 
I don't know. See, of even all the performances for White Lotus, I wouldn't give it to Connie. I'm going to give it to Caitlyn Deaver for Dope Sick because interesting. she portrayed a young lady who really, really went down the throes of addiction. And it was really, really sad mm. to watch. But she also had to she had to have a lot going on with her to portray kind of various stages of that. Right. So I'll give it to Caitlyn Deaver. And that is it for any noms that we'll discuss. And let's just quickly talk about the biggest snubs. We already talked about the biggest one that I felt because I even put Mandy Moore's performance in the final season of This Is Us as a hidden gem. I felt that it was an award worthy, yeah. um, phenomenal last season for her. Blackish did not receive any awards. This Is Us yeah. did not receive any award in the acting and major categories. Yep. That's that's on my list as well. I was really surprised for Blackish because Anthony Anderson had been nominated every year, even though he has not won, and neither has uh, Tracy, but he he had the most Emmy nominations and didn't even show up this year. Yeah. Uh Selena Gomez notably wasn't nominated for acting, even though yes. Steve Martin and Martin Short were on the list. I'm looking at on Vogue. They also talked about the fact that Jessica Chastain wasn't nominated for scenes from a marriage, even though Oscar Isaac was. And that's that's a Crazy. good one because Jessica Chastain did her thing. And then they also noted that. And just 50/50. like. Yeah. And just like that wasn't nominated. I wasn't expecting. And just like that to be nominated for that'll be a negative negative it was barely holding on and the fact that they got <laughs> green lit for season two is a miracle in my personal opinion i know were there any other snubs you thought of i'll say i have to say there are so many great shows that i understand that it really is hard to recognize everybody mm -hmm. but i think at the same time some of these categories feel um ridiculous because it's multiple people from the same series that are receiving recognition yes yes i'm like did did those uh studios have the money to be pushing especially with ted lasso i'm sure that's apple put all their money you know in that basket or whatever yeah, because you. let's be honest apple does not have nearly the portfolio of a lot of the other streaming no, clients so no, no. anyway but but if you think about it there's already been analysis on this, but when you look at network television, they're not, you know, thriving as well as they used to, right? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. That's why you have the push behind Evit, which is definitely, definitely well earned. <laughs> but, you know, I don't, I don't recall anything from NBC. You know, I'm sure This Is Us was their flagship show, but yeah, I don't know. I, I I hate seeing that Selena Gomez didn't get nominated. I'm not going to lie. It's not surprising that she didn't get nominated, but I'm like, you're going to nominate the two men, but not her, their trio. Exactly. And, I, and that's where the inconsistencies come in for me. Um, but yeah, you hit up on the ones that really meant a lot to me. And so this is a good list though. I, I have to say, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. Fun note, the Dancing with the Star dance with uh Daniela and Iman that that us dance was nominated for best choreography yes as it should have been absolutely and uh Sanaa Lathan got nominated as guest star so I was very I was very pleased <laughs> overall for the nominations especially for Abbott Elementary Love I really hate that um Literally all the cast didn't get nominated, but I'm very pleased with the ones that did. So, Absolutely. We'll see what happens when the award show airs in September. Guys, I know we ran long today, but we've been gone for a little bit. So we wanted to give y'all y'all money's worth, even though this is free. So thank you, <laughs> as always, for joining us on Recapping with Delora and Ashley. We appreciate it. Share this episode, tell your friends, family, loved ones, and even those you don't mess with like that. Okay, Delora. Share it on social media, you know, do what you need to do. <laughs> what are we recapping for the people next week? Waiting for tonight. <laughs> we are better yet. Let's get loud. I don't know why she feels the need to say this in everything she does these days. <laughs> But we are recapping 2022 Netflix Halftime, which is the Jennifer Lopez documentary. 
All right. We'll see you guys then. Bye.